In this video, I'm gonna show you absolutely everything you need to know about animation inside of Final Cut Pro. And I promise you, if you stick with me through this video, you're probably gonna learn a thing or two that you didn't know was even possible. Real quick, let's cover the basics. How do you do animation in Final Cut? Well, you have several different ways. One is to simply come over to your video inspector and you'll see stuff like your transform, crop, and distort. And then over to the right of those are all of these gray diamonds. Clicking those gray diamonds gives you a keyframe. If you want to delete a keyframe, you can click it again and that will remove it. But clicking and dragging specific numbers here on the right side really isn't the easiest way to animate an object in Final Cut. So a much better way to do so is to use the transform tool. That can be found here in the bottom left corner of your viewer, or you can press Shift T on your keyboard. Clicking that gives us the transform tool, and you'll notice if I zoom out here with Command minus, we have this bounding box and I can click and drag my object around. Here in the direct center is the anchor point. So this is from where all of the animations are going to be taking place. So what do I mean by that specifically? Well, if I were to come over to the right side and adjust the anchor point so that it's resting at the bottom of this rectangle, then I were to adjust the scale, you'll notice that the rectangle is slowly scaling in towards that anchor point. Additionally, if I were to go ahead and adjust the rotation, our rectangle would be rotating around that anchor point. So again, this is what it would look like if everything was centered, it's scaling towards the center, or it's rotating around the center. So you can use this to dynamically enhance your animations just simply by adjusting where this anchor point is taking place. Additionally, we have this little rotation handle, so I can just click and drag to rotate our object as much as we like and you'll notice that that bounding box on the outside is also rotating. To add a keyframe, you have several different options. Like I showed previously, you can use these gray diamonds on the right side, or you can come up here to the top left corner and click here to add a keyframe. By clicking that, it's going to automatically add a keyframe for all of the transform variables here on the right side. You'll notice that we didn't get any keyframes here in our crop tool or our distort tool, so it's just specifically the transform tool that will automatically get those keyframes by clicking that button. Now we can simply move our playhead forward in the timeline, so I'll go forward two seconds. And if I click and drag my object, Final Cut Pro will automatically add in another keyframe because we previously had a keyframe. So you'll notice here in the top right corner that the position parameter already has this automatic keyframe applied for us. So this can be an incredibly fast way to animate because we just need to move our playhead forward, move our object, move our playhead forward, move our object, so on and so forth. And all of those keyframes will automatically be added in. Maybe you accidentally added a keyframe that you didn't want. Well, you can simply come up here to the top left and we can push this back button and that will take us back to the most recent keyframe. Or we can of course also push forward. Once we do that, we can delete a keyframe by clicking this icon here and now that has been removed and you'll notice we're just down to three keyframes. So pushing play, we have this really basic animation of our square just moving around on the screen and it's actually quite smooth, but maybe you don't want the animation to be very smooth. Well, that's where this next part of keyframes comes into play. We can simply right click on any of these different keyframes and we can change them over to linear or to smooth. By default, they will always be smooth if you're working with the position parameter. Most of the time, this is a good thing, but it can be really annoying. And I know I'm gonna get a comment asking if you can change the default on this at this time of making this video, no, it's not possible to change the default, unfortunately. What we can do is just change these over to linear and I'll go ahead and do it for all three of these. And you'll immediately notice that my lines have been straightened out. So this is going to give us a much more jagged animation. There's going to be no sort of easing to the object. Another great way to work with keyframes is maybe you're not happy with the end position of your object. You might expect that you would need to be at the keyframe point before making any changes to your object, but you can actually just click directly on a keyframe and move it around on the screen. So if you decide that you're not happy with this end position here, 
you can very simply do that. If you want to take your keyframes way further, you're going to want to start using some Bezier curves. Earlier, we had these smooth keyframes, so I'll just right click on these and change them all back over to smooth. So now that my object is back to these smooth keyframes, there's some really cool things we can do with them. If I were to push command and click and drag on this specific keyframe, you'll start to notice that I get these handles that come off of it. And this is actually curving the line of our animation. So I don't need to go in and add individual keyframes to create this curved line. We can go ahead and have Final Cut Pro do all of the heavy lifting. So let's go ahead and play back and see how that animation looks. It's kind of going along this curve motion. And then at the very end, it plummets down really quite hard. So looking at this animation, it's not quite the desired effect I'm going for. So we can go ahead and adjust this animation. To adjust this animation, I'm going to push option and click on this and you'll see that that's giving me these two handles for our object. And because I pushed option, it essentially broke these two handles. So I'm going to push and hold option again and click on this handle and you'll notice that that kind of adjusts it. So now I'm working with both handles and now I have released the option key and that's going to stay in that sort of handle mode. But then if we push option and click and drag again, that's going to break them apart so we can really adjust this animation to our liking. And I'm again, I'm not holding down option as I do this. These two points are just completely broken because we used the option key previously. So if you ever want your two handles to be attached to each other, go ahead and push and hold option for the first time and that will essentially reset it. We could also adjust this first animation point. Maybe we don't want to adjust the handles on this left side. So we could push option and now they're broken apart. We can drag that out to our liking, just this how we want. So you do have quite a bit of control when it comes to your keyframes here in the viewer that you might not first suspect. Now, if we're being honest, the controls here don't have as many settings as I would like. I would love a lot more control over the easing and final positions of everything and the actual timing of the animation, but this is what's given inside of Final Cut Pro. That said, there is quite a bit more we can do using the Video Animation Inspector. To get access to that, you're just gonna find your clip down here in the timeline, right click on it, and then select Show Video Animation. You can also get that with Control V. Once we've expanded that, you'll notice the various keyframes happening here throughout our timeline. And this is the number one way to adjust the speed of your animation. If you find an animation is too slow or too fast, this is the place you wanna go. To adjust the speed of the animation, you can just simply click and drag directly on your keyframes. And you'll notice now, if I were to play this back, the speed is much faster on the animation. Or if we stretch it way out and push play, the animation is far slower. When you need to adjust the timing of your animation, you definitely need to jump into the animation inspector. But there's actually a lot more cool stuff you can do with this video animation inspector. If we go over to the left side, firstly, we can completely disable the animation of our object. So you'll notice it's not animating anywhere at all. We can also go ahead and change the exact parameter that we're working with, because sometimes you'll want to work with only the position. Sometimes you'll only want to work with the scale. To do that, you're just going to click on this little down arrow next to each parameter and we can change that here. So let's go ahead and change this over to the scale. And now we can see that the other keyframes have turned black indicating that we can't click on them. So we know where the keyframes are happening in time and space on the timeline, but we can't actually access them, which saves us a lot from accidentally clicking the wrong keyframe. But if I were to come over here to the far right and click to add a keyframe on our scale, or if we were to push option K, which is a great way to do it, we can see that we've created a keyframe here. We can move forward, we can increase the scale, and now those two animation keyframes are happening here on our timeline and we can adjust their timing independently of the timing of the position keyframes. And I do have just a couple more quick tips for you when it comes to the video animation inspector. If you find that a keyframe is just not quite in the right spot, it's just a frame or two off and you don't want to click and drag and try and get it just right, all you need to do is push comma or period, and that allows you to move it in one frame increments. So here's comma and here's period. 
Additionally, if you find that you have an exact position that you want to get your object back to in a really easy way, you can simply click on a specific keyframe and you can push Option Shift C. So it's not Command C like the regular type of copying, but you can copy it with Option Shift C. And then if you want to paste that, you can push Option Shift V. And now that will appear over here. You can even select multiple keyframes at once by holding down Shift. Then we can do Option Shift C and Option Shift V and paste those. So if you have a recurring animation, you can go ahead and do that down here in the Animation Inspector. So when it comes to the transform tools inside of Final Cut Pro, the rotation, position, scale, that is about all you can really do. And if you ask me, it is a little bit unfortunate. I do think there should be more tools here inside of Final Cut Pro. And I'm really hoping that this video is outdated when you watch it and all those tools have been added into Final Cut Pro. That said, there are some hidden tools inside of this animation inspector that I think everybody needs to be aware of. And so I wanted to add them to this video. These tools are more specifically for effects. Well, one super common effect in Final Cut Pro is simply adjusting the opacity of a specific object. But what we can do is come down here inside of our animation inspector, and you'll notice that the opacity has a different icon that is not available on these other parameters. That icon indicates that we can expand this out and it gives us some really cool controls that I wish were available everywhere in Final Cut. If we click that, we have now expanded this and you can also get that by just double clicking on the opacity line. And you'll notice that my opacity line is right here and I just simply click and drag that up and down and that adjusts the opacity on our object. So one thing we can do with this little display menu is by pushing Option and clicking to add a keyframe. So I can go ahead and add in multiple keyframes here. And much like the keyframes that you might work with when it comes to audio, you can do the same things here. So I just simply click and drag this down and now we have this nice straight line for our opacity. But additionally, we can right click directly on the line between these two keyframes and that gives us this sub menu. So right now everything is set to linear, but we can change this over to ease or we could right click the other one and select ease out. Additionally, coming over here to the right side, we can click and drag directly on this handle. And just like with our audio, we now have this fader handle. So this is a super fast and efficient way to add in a little opacity animation to the end of your object. We can also use the range selection tool to quickly add a whole bunch of keyframes. If we push R, get our range selection tool, and click and drag across here on our opacity, then drag that down, you'll notice that it's automatically added in four keyframes for me here in the video animation inspector. This doesn't just apply for opacity, but it also applies for a lot of the other effects inside of Final Cut Pro when they have this little slider here. So what I mean by that is let's go ahead and look up the 50s TV effect and I'll apply that onto our object. And you'll notice that I have this little amount slider here, which I can adjust. But on top of that, if we come up here to the top of our video animation inspector, we have that same expansion icon. So I can go ahead and double click on that. And now we have access. We can add in all of the easing. We can use this handle to fade everything out here if we want to. And so that's pretty much everything you could possibly need to know about animation in Final Cut Pro. But if you're like me and you look at the animation tools in Final Cut and find them to be quite a bit lacking, then you have a few options. One is to simply check out a lot of my Apple Motion tutorials where I teach all about animation and how to get it over into Final Cut Pro. But another super great option is to check out this comprehensive list of my favorite animation plugins that I've made for Final Cut Pro. So I'll have a link down below. They are affiliate links and it's just some of the animation tools I rely on so heavily directly inside of Final Cut. So if that interests you, make sure you check out that link. And I'm going to try and continue to update that list as I find more and more amazing animation tools. Thank you again and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.